What's going on guys? First and foremost, I want to give all the absolute credit to this YouTube channel, Frosty Fusion and uh, EAS, who is said that it was translated by and then uploaded onto this YouTube channel. Obviously, I will link it down below so that you guys can check it out for yourself. And I would highly recommend watching the interview for yourself uh, before watching my video and kind of coming to your own opinions and your own ideas about what Miura is talking about. But if you don't know what this is, so this is an interview with Kentaro Miura in the year 2020 before he passed away. Actually, only a couple of months before he passed away, which is the really scary thought. And just before we get into anything else, obviously, rest in peace, Miura. But think about this. Think about how... Uh, you know, a human being is able to sit here, talk and speak and be energetic and be funny and and laughing, and then something tragic can happen six months later. I think that's just something that we need to remember and reflect on, that human life is fragile. And, you know, if you have people out there that are your loved ones or your friends or whatever, if they seem okay, just, just remember that anything can happen anytime. And it's just important to you know, tell the people in your life that you love, that you love them. I, I think that that's something that's really important to remember. That's not talked about at all in the interview. Obviously, the interview is completely separate because they, they would have no idea that that was going to happen. But I just think it's a good thing to remember. Um, and just a really sad thing to to think about, you know. Uh, you know, I could go into personal stories, which I won't. But uh, same, similar things have happened where I thought someone was perfectly fine and we have a conversation. And then a couple of days later, they're gone. And it's just, uh, it's just a really, really sad thing, man. And uh, the interview itself makes me happy, you know, seeing him uh, kind of light up at the questions and laughing and, you know, uh, being polite, you know, covering his mouth while he's laughing and stuff like that. And it's, uh, it's really, really wholesome to see. And uh, even more than that, you know, there's really no video interviews with Kentaro Miura out there that I know of. Now, I've read interviews that he's done in magazines or for other, you know, interviewers asking him, but this is a very, very rare occurrence. Like, regardless of what happened to Miura, this is still incredibly rare. This is not a normal thing to see him on camera being interviewed, answering questions. So there's just so much, there's so much that hits you, you know, like, first of all, there's an interview where he's talking about Berserk, which is awesome. Then it's actually seeing him in an interview. Then it's remembering that Miura is no longer with us. Then it's remembering the fragility of human existence. And it's just, it's overwhelming, man. It's overwhelming. Uh, so all that aside, like I said, I'm not going to play the interview here. Uh, these people painstakingly probably went through the process of translating it and uploading the video. So go watch the video link down below. Uh, I'm just going to comment on a few things that Miura said during the interview. Uh, I know uh, one thing that he starts out with saying is that, you know, he feels like people have been with him along his journey for the past 30 years, that it's kind of friends that have been along the journey. And he talks about the difference between older fans and younger fans. And I like that he says that a lot of Berserk and the way that he writes Berserk is reflected in a lot of the 70s and 80s manga that he was inspired by, and he encourages people to read those types of manga. So I think that that's really cool that he did that and shine some light on that because it's true. I mean, they're just like when, with movies, you know? There's a lot of, like, younger people that don't want to go back and watch black and white movies. And the same thing with manga readers, you know, that read the new stuff coming out, but they don't go back and read Devil Man. They don't go back and read Fist of the North Star. You know, they don't, they don't read these kind of, like, emerging iconic stories that inspired so many people before them. So I like that he kind of throws that out in a very respectful way and just says, hey, you know, you should check out these because... These are what inspired Berserk, and, and this is uh, kind of how I write my style of, of uh, manga. I still kind of write it in that 80s style. So I thought that that was really cool that he said that. Uh, then they mentioned Berserk merchandise, which I think was really funny. And he goes, he says something along the lines of like, I don't know why anybody would want an ugly Baylet, but I guess we're all Berserk fans, so I guess that's why we want it. I, I, always, I thought that was fucking hilarious. He's like, he's like, I can understand getting like a puck figure because it's cute but like, why do people want to bail it and uh i thought that was hilarious i also wonder how miura would think of people getting like the brand of sacrifice actually tattooed on them because uh, there's a lot of those and i wonder uh, i wonder what his reaction to that would be uh um sadly sadly i will never know that but i'm really curious if he uh if he's like i don't know why you would want to bail it um then he also talks about the artistry uh aspect he talks about the difference between 
uh, drawing analog and digital and how digital has really, really helped the production. And he says that Berserk is pretty much going to be digital from now on. And I believe that Studio Gaga will continue that process as well. It makes sense. And he talks about a lot of the benefits of it is that he can have himself and assistants work on it kind of at the same time rather than it, when he was doing it before by himself. Uh, you know, it would just be like him sitting down doing it. And he talks about even how he uh, drew particular scenes with pencil first. I mean, obviously they get inked and traced over and enhanced and all that. But like, imagine sitting there and he talks about the boat arc. <laughs> of all things for him to talk about, he talks about the boat arc with the fucking pirates that I hate. Uh, I love it. Um, but he talks about drawing that segment with pencil. And I'm just sitting there like... I'm thinking about that artwork. I could pull it out and look at it right now, but I'm just like, good lord. Like just sitting there drawing that with pencil is insane. It's it's insane. The level of skill and detail and just incredible artistry on display with that is crazy. Um and then I think the most important thing that people will talk about from this interview is he gives a little bit of a tease of the future of Berserk. And I think that it's good for two reasons. I think that it's good because he mentions basically the status quo of the story is going to change, which I think is a good thing. I think that you need to be able to change and shake things up as time goes on. And Berserk has always done that. You know, uh, a lot of the arcs are very different and signature from one another, uh, which I think is good. I think that's a good form of storytelling is that you can't just do the same thing consistently. You got to change it up, which uh, with a story this long, obviously you really need to. And I also think it confirms that the continuation of Berserk that Gaga had been doing is the exact direction that Miura was going to go. Some people still think that, you know, it's not the way that Miura would have wanted it. And I agree probably the panels aren't set up the way Miura would write it, or maybe the expressions on the characters aren't the same that he would do it, but that's something you can never get back. And that's something that you just have to understand as a fan is that, like, he's a sing single individual person with an individual vision, literally, literally, nobody on planet fucking Earth earth can do what he did now other people can draw the berserk characters and they can draw the story and other people might even be better artists than him but nobody can do what he did because it's his story okay and i think that that's like the main thing that we need to understand like he put his heart and soul into the story you can't put uh you know your soul into the story and then have somebody else be able to capture things the exact same way that you did it because you are you, you know? Um, but bearing that, he mentions that the status quo is going to change in the sense that all the characters coming together, going on an adventure, which of course relates to, you know, Farnese, Serpico, Shirike, all the characters coming together, going to Elfhelm, you know, dealing with everything on Elfhelm, having that kind of magical adventure, that's going to end, which it did with Elfhelm being destroyed. He also said that Guts and Griffith were going to meet again soon, which it did at the destruction of Elfhelm. And then he mentions the story is going to go on a little bit of a different journey and delve into a bit of Skull Knight's past. He actually says that Skull Knight's past has been teased, but he wants to go into it more deeply. So I think that means, I think that's pretty much confirmation that we're going to get specific information as to what happened in Skull Knight's entire past. I don't know if we're going to get a full flashback because Berserk has never really done that. I mean, it did, if you count the Golden Age as a flashback, but that dealt with guts, you know? And if you count uh, the Chitch chapters, but that was only three chapters. I don't know if they would go into a backstory of Skull Knight, but if Skull Knight comes to guts and starts speaking to him and maybe tells him his story, maybe that would be precedent to have one of those. Uh, again, it kind of worries me that like fans would probably think that that's not how Miura would do it, but... Right here in this interview, he's saying that he's going to change it up and focus on something different, and it's not going to be the same thing as the full party going on an adventure, uh, and he wants to delve into Skull Knight's past. So to me, I think that could mean a couple of things. I think it could mean Guts and Skull Knight kind of departing from the group, maybe Guts facing this challenge by himself. I think the group will follow. I don't think that we're going to get rid of you know, Serpico and the rest of the characters, obviously not. But I think that we might have a separation in the group. We might have multiple things going on, which would also make sense. Because you could have, if you had Guts and Skull Knight going their way, and then you had the group on Roderick's boat, and then you also have Ricker, and then you also have Casca and Falconia, you got all these nice little pieces of the puzzle 
that you can build up individually and then bring together in your final climax. And I think that that would actually work out really, really well. So I think with that idea in mind, that is pretty much how the story is going. And we see Guts more isolated than he's ever been. And I think that in the last chapter, uh, well, when I'm recording this, there's a new chapter coming out this week, but in the last chapter of this, you know, uh, not even sure Kay was able to get to Guts. You know, he is truly isolated. And we haven't seen Skull Knight since the destruction of Elfhelm. So it might make sense for Skull Knight to show up where Guts is and then maybe uh, be like, hey, brother, <laughs> I went through the same shit a thousand years ago. Get over it. No, I don't know. Uh, but but really, I mean, being serious, this is a, a treat, man. This is a treat for us fans to finally see. This was obviously done in 2020 during the Berserk exi uh, exhibition. And uh, obviously at the time of recording, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen, which makes it even more tragic, but also makes the video kind of nice to watch because nobody's worried about that. We're just sitting here celebrating Berserk and talking to one of our favorite creators. And I think that that's a, a special thing. So uh, yeah, interview was great. It's only 11 minutes. Uh, like I said, it'll be linked down below. So you guys can check it out and give me your thoughts and your own opinions on it. Uh, I think what we got out of it was great. And you know, we've never gotten something like this before. So it's really, really cool to see. So let me know what you guys think about it down below. Other than that, guys, if you like the video, go ahead and thumbs up and comment and I'll talk to you next time.